Mike is rolling. Camera's on. Why is he rolling? What are you rolling? I don't know. We can't smoke on this, Mike. <laughs> This is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort uh, Krieger Margin 1. And uh, we are uh, starting our, of course, he has to get the shot. We are starting our review series of the Predator franchise. Now, we reviewed the first Predator film before, and I've seen it so many times, honestly. We, we didn't feel like this needed a re review. We didn't feel like it needed a re review, so if you guys want to go back and look at our thoughts on the re review, it'll be either on the box here, or it'll be in the description box below, or some other link, way, whatever. I mean, hey. It's over there. It's over there, guys. Yeah, by On bugs. bugs. Uh, you'll also get your thoughts on Alien Covenant, since he didn't get to share his thoughts. But uh, we are going to carry on to the next Predator film, which will be Predator 2. Before we get into the actual review and the, the, yes. uh, the statistics and whatnot, um, yes. I haven't seen this film since the year I bought it on DVD, which was like 2015 or 2016. It was the year where I went on that DVD buying spree. I will also preface my experience of this film. Um, I watched this when I was younger, and I've probably watched it about six times. It's my most watched Predator film, because any time it'd come on TV, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to watch that. Because it always, I felt like the first one was predictable, and this one kind of tricked things up. I think out of all of them, I've seen the first one the most, and this is actually my second time watching it, even though I've owned it for like almost like over five years. Yeah. Um, all right, so... So we break into the numbers and see break in, Let's break into the numbers. We're okay, so first gonna, thing we will look at. We're going to start calling this segment... <laughs> For the ratings from audience, according to the always gold standard Rotten Tomatoes, never go there for their uh, reviews. Always, we generally just do that to have a consensus on a guide point to see how fucking wrong people are. The audience put this film at a 4.4, .4, and critics put it at 3.0, which, on my scale, puts that at very bad. Yeah, for even for me, that like that puts it on like the bad side of the scale too. Because for me, like on my scale, a film that's maybe like a five and a half or above, I would still watch it and not hate myself. Here's a they're saying on my scale, this film is not watchable at all. Here's a like, brief, here's a brief slideshow of movies that we've put at a three and a half or lower. Sorry, Mike, for that one. <laughs> so, um, I don't think this is remotely close to that bad. I will agree with you, it's not. So, um, we'll get into the review aspect of that in a moment after I go through some numbers. The box office for this is actually $28.3 million. <laughs> Their budget was $35 million. <laughs> Alright, so they had a budget of 20 to $30 million and they, they box office $57. I, I, they I, made money instead of losing hundreds, I, I, dozens I of millions. I figured this film would have made money because it has two other sequels to it, even though the next sequel for this film didn't come out till 2010. It did win. Um, it was nominated for uh, for uh, two of them, and it actually won in 1991. Austra uh, the Australian Cinematographer Society gave them uh, Cinematographer of the Year to Pierre Libby. So that was a pretty good cinematography. I'd say. Um, for night, for for the how old, for how aged this film is, it I actually the, did pretty good. I thought it did a really good job of encapsulating the back then. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I definitely. I, like I said in the beginning of the film, this film definitely gave me RoboCop vibes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go over some interesting trivia, which I've not read these yet, so Mike have to, to have some editing. Yep. Wow! The filming of the alley scene was very troublesome for the filmmakers. Uh, looks like it was in a really bad neighborhood. Um, the alley was littered with garbage, which they used in the film for the most with, part. With King Willie? Um, yes. Uh, it was... Yes. 
It was plagued with large rats. Local residents were angry by the no noise the crew created, um, and they would throw bottles and paper bags filled with feces from windows at the crew in the alley below. That sounds like, well, were they filming the set in Los Angeles? Either that or New York. Uh, behind I guess it's Oh yeah, it's Los Angeles, because right there below it says. Um, uh, worst of all, the crew found a dead body hidden among the garbage. <laughs> Uh, uh, Shane Mahan commented the most horrible places I've ever had to film were in the alleys of downtown Los Angeles and Predator 2 is shot in a lot of those disgusting alleys. Several of the hunting party members were played by players from the Los Angeles Lakers who <laughs> Danny Glover was a big fan and when the production needed very tall people to play background Predators he asked them to help out. Stephen Hopkins was given the task of directing a Predator 2 originally um, after greatly impressioning the studio when directing uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 5 and The Dream Child, uh, he was given just four weeks to shoot and a further four weeks to edit the film. <laughs> I don't like the timeline. We gave him four weeks to make the movie. Four and, weeks to make this movie? Like, record this movie, and then they gave him another four weeks to edit this movie. So they gave him eight weeks to make The New Predator 2. Yes. You had to make this entire movie from beginning okay, to end in eight weeks. That, okay, okay, that may actually point out some of my nitpicks to this film. Yeah. But, I'll go into it when we get to it. That actually helps out a lot with my nitpicks and actually may have changed my thoughts on that. So, um, as I might have said before this review, Arnold Schwarzenegger was not in this movie, as you guys might have noticed. Obviously. Um, it was due to a financial thing. The money that they offered him, Arnold Schwarzenegger wanted another $250,000, and they refused, so they went with They've been trying to get Arnold back on every Predator film since the first one, and he just either is too busy or he says no. Bullshit. So the spear that was used in the film actually disappeared and was reported stolen after it was done filming. L.A. for you, motherfuckers. Somebody in L.A. right now has that in their goddamn basement. After the Predator was disarmed, uh, the, the, uh, the person who played him was actually a one-armed stuntman that they had. Uh, some of the Predator sounds were recycled from classic 1990 movie Tremors. <laughs> I love that movie. This is the first film Gary Busey made after his nearly fatal motorcycle accident. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, because his accident was in 88 or 87. This film came out, came out after that, so... He must have had uh, CTE after that and as yeah. he got older. Also, I will point out a trivia fact right here, right now, as you're looking for more. This, there is... Bill Paxton is probably one of the very few actors that has been in both Alien and Predator at the same time. I was waiting for a It's Game Over Man reference. Once. He was in Aliens, and he was also in Predator 2. Ironically, he was in the first sequel of both franchises, which is also a coincidence. Another fun fact that I saw happen glancing at your phone, Bill Paxton is also the only actor who has been killed by an alien, a Predator, and a Terminator. The flintlock that Elder Predator gives Harrington is a Mikulet lock. A Insert picture of that. A what? Mikulet. I'm not pronouncing it right. It's spelled, for Michael and Edding, M-I-Q-U-E-L-E-T lock. L-O-C-K. Display picture here, because I don't know what the fuck that thing is. The machete used by Jerry fighting uh, fighting the alien on the subway is the same as those pr uh, those used by Dutch and his team in Predator. Ah, this is what I was looking for. Um, so, if any of you guys like guns, in the very beginning I was trying to figure out what the hell that shotgun pistol bullshit that the main dude had. Clever. Yes, it is a 12-gauge Benelli M1 Super 90 entry semi-automatic with a cut-down barrel, a remove stock, pistol grip, and a laser sight. The shotgun had previously been the main weapon carried by the title character in the short-lived 1980s Sam Jones television show series, The Highwayman. <laughs> so there's a big-ass shotgun handgun. Yep, that's been heavily modified that was in another TV show. Okay, so my thoughts on this movie. Um, I, for a second time viewing, I, do, I still do enjoy this film a lot. Before I heard about the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, thing and this film have to be, have seen to be shot, recorded, and done within two months, um, this film, I felt like this film, it, it felt rushed. I, I felt like there was a lot of scenes that could have been recorded that could have fleshed out the story a little bit more, like... Um, two main points I want to point out. Um, it said 
Harrigan found his old buddy's like body mm. and like pried that little uh, fucking hook thing out of his hand or whatever. He he just said it in like in subtext in another scene where whereas like I feel like that um, if this film had more time it'd probably be a little bit more better and more fleshed out if they actually showed him finding his buddy's body because he was supposed to get, supposed to get back with him at one o'clock and then be like oh shit what the fuck's going on because he said he pried it out of his hand and then. The obvious scene that everyone complains about is the goddamn fight with fucking King Willie. That's that that is one that is one of the biggest complaints about this film is that people wanted to see King Willie fight the Predator, but it was just like, ah, I'm ready to fight you. Dead. For me, I could see why people didn't really, I guess, like this movie because it really draws away from I guess the original idea of it, with it being in the jungle and all that shit and whatnot. But at the same time, it's kind of like, there hasn't been a sequel to this film, probably at least for a good five or six years in between the first film and this one. So it's kind of like a, bre- a breath of fresh air. Um, I feel like the cast is a bit... I really don't remember much of the original cast of the first film besides Arnold and Jesse Ventura. In this film, I remember quite a few more people in this film, so it's like it's a bit more memorable. The story is good. I wish it was fleshed out a bit more because for like filming wise and whatnot. I am going to go on a limb and say that this film is an eight and a half. Maybe because I understand the situation that the director was put into, but if it were fleshed out a little bit more and some little tiny little nitpicks here and there were fixed up a tiny bit more it would be a nine but for me this film gets an eight and a half which is great greatly better than what the fucking internet says already oh the indian version of this film by the way before i continue with my review um i was looking it up when i closed out by now but they meant um the opening scene and most of the fight scenes and uh all of the cussing was all edited out so about 50 percent of this movie was edited out if you watched it in india <laughs> Continuing on, this film um, is arguably um, the best film of all the Predator series. The cast is good for it. The action's good. It enveloped time. Um, its pacing, I felt like as well. Um, the only thing I take away from it, which I kind of talked about the movie already, but the only thing I don't like is the off-screen deaths. They did a lot of them, and, and I think off-screen deaths are one of the things that piss me off more than anything else in a movie, other than lame stories like Resident Evil. I mean, we, we I mean, it's all because of the fact that he had to get this movie done in two months. Yes, so I understand that. The production value that they made it was, if it was this good when it was rushed, I would love to see if it had like a good this, budget and could have afforded anyone. I feel like anyone. it should have been three hours. Yeah, it was only an hour and a half. Um, so, anyways, I'm going to do this more almost double what the audience thing said, more than double. I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. If they didn't have the production issues they had, I would have rated it higher mm-hmm. and less off-screen. Like, if they would have been able to afford Arnold Schwarzenegger in this, and then uh, it would have been just a match. It would have been very interesting instead of because one thing that kind of breaks apart is it doesn't feel like a continuation of the story. It just seems like another random. The story. first one, but not the first one. It's a random story that just got thrown there. But they they built on some things that you could make even more movies yeah. from. Um, I just feel like production and interest in Hollywood at this time, it just wasn't there because they. It was less sci-fi like bullshit. It was more like, like a cop movie. Cop movie bullshit. That that's well I'm saying that's what was interesting to Hollywood was Arnold Schwarzenegger big muscle guy shooting bad guys and that's what made the original Predator successful because that's what people wanted at this time and there's no I'm too old for this shit in this movie so we are setting up for Predator 2 our next Predator movie is next film in the Predator series will be Predators or Predators twice twice we will see you guys then. Peace. <laughs>